You know, I make a lot of content talking about the economy. And now I feel it's time to talk about my journey to upward mobility. And hopefully you can get some insights on the trek to upward mobility. In my videos, I have talked about staying away from the low rent district. And this is a concept that I want to embody in this video because a lot of people's like, man, you know, I need to get where the rent's low so my money will go further. And they don't understand the negative consequences of living in the low rent district. One of the things that happened to me when I moved to the high rent district was my perspectives dramatically expanded. One of my neighbors, and I've never met the man, but I know he knows in zip code 30327, is Arthur Blank, the owner of the Falcons, the founder of Home Depot. This is the type of energy that I've encountered living in this neighborhood. I should say when I lived in this neighborhood, because you know, it's funny. I moved into an apartment off of Glenridge Drive, 2010 ish. And two, yeah, 2009 ish, 2010 ish. And I stayed there for a while. And then I moved to Dunwoody, then I moved back to Sandy Springs. And here's something that is really interesting. None of my moves were long distance. None of my moves were more than three or four miles. I've pretty much stayed in the same area, three or four miles. That was the total sum of moving distance because I was able to move from an apartment. Um, my last house in Sandy Springs was literally three miles away from the first apartment that I stayed in. And let's talk about this apartment complex. When I moved in, there was a guy that had a Ferrari. There was a guy that had a Lambo. There was a guy that had a Porsche. And there was several medical residents who lived in the apartment complex. When I moved in, there, um, there was, um, no trash. I mean, the market, the apartment complex was immaculate. There were no fights. There was no ghetto activity. Consequently, most of the residents were white. And I will tell you that the apartment complex had a cherry picking system. If you were a certain type of person, you couldn't live there. I know this for a fact, and this kept the complex pretty stabilized. And this is one of the things, and I know that that sounds unkind to purposely kick out people because where I currently live, they do not have that kind of policy. Any and everybody's up in here, and I have seen a difference. I don't know how long I'm going to be here, but I do know I'm not going to be here forever. And I like the location. I like being central. I like the high rise. I love the view. But once again, more than likely, I'm going to end up back in the house again. More than likely, that's what's going to happen. So, or maybe this condo this condo right here is across the this is where i met that hot chick she lives over there and those uh residences are about 1.2 to 1.5 million i may go look at one i might that if i stay in this locale i may move there because it's going to be a different vibe because one of the things that I learned when I moved to the high rent districts is typically 
high rent keeps foolishness out except here in my case of being in the Huntley um, there's some foolishness that goes on because there is no vetting process if your credit score you don't if you make the income and your credit score is good enough you up in this joint and what I have learned is when there is a vetting process when there is a someone who is actually standing at the gate saying yes no foolishness doesn't happen foolishness doesn't happen if there was a very strict and you know to say once again i know that sounds unkind i know that sounds um blatant racist to not let people in because they have certain proclivities but from living in zip code 30327 I lived in a foolishness free zone and that's something that I've come to appreciate that is something that I have come to really really love because here's the thing when you get money, and this is something I le learned living in Sandy Springs, is you don't want to be around less than. If you feel the need to go out and buy yourself a Ferrari and you have a Ferrari parked in your driveway or your garage, you don't want your neighbors talking about Carl's trying to show off. No. And that's one of the things I've noticed around here. There are several Bentleys, there are several Rolls Royces, there are several Lamborghinis, there are several Ferraris, there are several Porsches, there are several very high-end cars. So literally when I'm tooling around in my Porsche in the neighborhood, I will see no less than five or ten other Porsches. And that's one of the reasons I live here because I can live my best life because it's normal here. It is normal here. And this is one of the things that if you achieve upward mobility, I saw a comment talking about it is the responsibility of people who have made it to reach back and help the less than. And I'm going to say I vigorously disagree with that. You want to know why? If the less than was on a trek of upward mobility, they would meet these people. Cause this is one of the things that's happened. I have had several mentors in this neighborhood. I've had met several people who've helped me with businesses because they were on the same journey. They were on the same pathway. So if these people were on the same path, they would encounter people that will help you i will tell you something and because when you show yourself that you're on the right path that you're trying to achieve greatness millionaires will help you they will be very this is one of the things i've consistently seen dealing with people who feel that you're on their level they're completely transparent they're completely open I've met people, it's like, oh yeah, we pay cash for our house. I mean, just right off the riff because they felt comfortable talking to me. And I almost was gonna do a Daniel Mac and just drive around the houses because I know when I drive up to someone's house in a Porsche, a red 911 and knock on the door, they're not gonna call the police. It's like, who's this in the Porsche? That's gonna be their first question. They're not gonna call the police. You wanna know why? criminals don't rob people driving Porsches just doesn't happen and I have had people tell me how much money they make what their business what they're doing just being a hundred percent open because they felt comfortable with me they felt comfortable to tell me their deep personal business I'm and th this is one of the things, because you, you, you hear the things is, well, the rich are trying to keep their foot on the neck of the poor. Uh, that's not true. That's not true at all. I'll do another video why people are poor. Um, 
what I have found is I have pushed and elevated myself um, that I have been able to dramatically change my perspective by living in this neighborhood. You want to know why? Because this neighborhood put me in the proximity of many millionaires and a few billionaires. It put me in the circles. Like last night, I went to the Capitol Grill. This is a swank place you can hang out. The food is delicious. And this is where you can encounter someone like that. This is why I go to Hal's. This is why I go to Capitol Grill. This is why I go to the high end eateries because you have no clue to who you will run into. And one of the things is these places have a dress code. So there will not be anyone in there with a hat, baseball hat turned on the back. Most of the people will be in sports coats or a suit and tie. So you're not gonna have no riffraff up in there. And what you will have is the well-heeled people of Atlanta enjoying the meal and the networking opportunities are fucking fantastic with that crowd because everyone who's in there is doing something. Everyone who's in there, if they're not doing something, they aspire to do something. So you can meet all types of people in the Capitol Grill, house, the eateries. There are certain places around here that are just amazing. And I'm gonna do more videos like this because you know I have a lot of people. It's like you know we're trying to live in the low rent district. We're trying to do what we can do to make sure that we're okay. And I'm like, okay, you're you're missing the point. When you move to the high rent district, you create closer proximity to people who are doing things. One of the things that I have noticed. Like I live in the high rise and I can frequently drive into this high rise parking garage, get on the elevator and come upstairs and not run into anyone. My first three weeks, I did that every day and I didn't run into anyone. You want to know why these folks are busy. They're doing something. Just the high rent forces you to be activated. It forces you to do stuff like my rent's forty seven hundred dollars. I know a lot of people's like, oh, my God, he's throwing money away on such high rent. Let me tell you something. The possibility of meeting someone in this building that will help me make ten million dollars is exponentially great there than me meeting someone in College Park. To help me make two hundred dollars. See, it's proximity. I've already met people. I've already networked in here. I've already come across income producing opportunities. I've only been in here a hot minute. This neighborhood has energy. It has proximity. It has power. And if you know, a lot of people are like, man, that's just high rent. The rent's too high. And one of the things I have noticed that the people who move out of this building they move somewhere more expensive. You want to know why? Favorite saying of mine. Luxuries once tasted become necessities. Luxuries once tasted become necessities. You cannot go back to regular once you had like, you know, if I move from here to another high rise, be sure to have a doorman. That doorman is kind of like an unpaid employee. Like I get packages, I got a new drone, I got new camera equipment that had to be signed for. But because we have a doorman, I don't have to be here to get my stuff. That's a pretty good perk. But the journey to upward mobility is many, many parts. It is many, many aspects. And once again, I've been scoping out my next move, even though I'm not making my next move no sooner than next October. And I've been scoping it out. But I'm going to do a comparison between this neighborhood 
and where I started. I started at, in Atlanta at Fort McPherson. I started on the SWATS Southwest ATL. That's where I started. And like the Jeffersons, I have, I'm moving on up. I'm moving on up. And we're going to continue this trek. We're going to continue this movement. We're going to continue this journey because I'm trying to implore to you that if you get rid of the notion of living in the cheap rent district and you stretch yourself and you push yourself, you can make more money. You can make more money in the high rent district because of who you're in proximity with. It's going to be different. It's going to be very, very different.